a lot of people have probably guessed it. They assumed that we would lose to Brighton. And we did. And us as United fans, you know, we always want to win every game. That is the mentality that we have been brought up on. The mentality that Ten Hag, definitely in my opinion, has instilled within the club. Should be instilled within the team, but there are players in our team that are lacking that winning mentality. That are lacking that maturity to fight, to work hard, to actually just do everything and what it takes to win. It's non-existent. We'll speak about the Brighton game and exactly how that went down. There is a bit of good news with regards to certain players returning from injury. But there's also, before I started recording this, there is also a bit of bad news on the injury front. It seems like this season has started even worse than last season. But it's a pattern, a familiar pattern that in the second season or the third season, as with Ole Mourinho, there always seems to be this failing, this lack of effort, this total disjointedness that we see within the club itself. Brighton literally show and continue to show what you need to do to run a successful football club. Their recruitment team are so good that they replaced players that they thought are irreplaceable with better players. How is that possible? You could talk about the amount of money that their team costs compared to ours. But like Ten Hag said after the game, when we come looking for a player, the price inflates. That is the truth. But it is also down to our recruiters, our transfer people that are supposedly doing these deals. We know that they couldn't sell the likes of Maguire, McTominay, Van der Beek, Martial, etc. And they are still at the club. Maguire in the starting, not in the starting 11, but in the team. Van de Beek in the squad and he was supposed to be on his way to Turkey. The likes of Martial coming on in the second half. And on that moment, Hoyland definitely should have stayed on the pitch. He was an attacking threat for us. He was causing problems for Brighton. And yet he got taken off. Ten Hag says that he's not fit enough yet to play a 90-minute game. I don't believe that. That was a mistake by Ten Hag to take off. Rasmus Hoyland. When he brought on Martial, we basically had two players that were not doing what they're supposed to do. McTominay started the game. We were playing with 10 men. How he's starting for Manchester United in 2023, I don't know. He wasn't good enough under Ole. He wasn't good enough under Mourinho. What makes you think he's good enough right now for Eric Ten Hag? How did we not accept a 30 million bid for McTominay when it was offered by West Ham. How did we reject that? How are we not able to get rid of players who are not good enough for Manchester United and where Eric Ten Hag wants to take the team? We're supposed to be closing a gap on City, Arsenal, Liverpool, but we can't even beat the likes of Spurs who have a new manager. We still cannot beat Brighton. They won us again. Our unbeaten run at home started after the loss to Brighton last season, the beginning of last season. And now it ended at home to a Brighton team with a different manager. Yes, certain players are still there, but they still done what they were supposed to do. They stuck to their system, played their game and were clinical. We look disjointed, dismantled, confused. There are so many videos out there that show us not pressing, not running, not tracking runners. That's where the first goal comes in. It's where the third goal comes in. How are we not tracking runners and conceding the same goal? Game in, game out. Ball goes wide, gets cut back, tap in. It happened against Arsenal for Odegaard. It happened against Spurs. And it probably would have happened against Wolves, where we were not that good. Now, a lot might say that there are external factors that are 
affecting the team. The Sancho situation, the Anthony situation, Maguire who was a captain and led certain players in this dressing room and now is an alienated, isolated figure who was supposed to be gone. There is so many bad apples inside the dressing room and you would have thought that Ten Hag sorted this out, but he hasn't. It is clear to see that there is still a weak mentality in the team. When we go 1-0 down, heads drop. Now you cannot fault certain players who show the passion and the desire and the determination. The likes of Hoyland, Reguilon, a on loan left back, showing true desire to want to win and play well. You have the likes of Hannibal Mabry coming on in the second half and showing passion and fight and desire. Pelistri, in my opinion, I said in my preview, should have started the game. We're changing systems, playing a diamond in midfield. For what? We have a right winger available. Play Garnacho on the right hand side if you don't trust Pelistri to start yet. But there were mistakes made by Ten Hag and it has to be called out. We cannot believe that our manager is untouchable. He needs to be criticized. He needs to be seen for what it is. He made mistakes by starting the likes of McTominay, by changing the system, a formation that we've never played. Ever since Ten Hag came in, he's always played 4-2-3-1. Against Brighton, a good Brighton team in good form, under a good manager. Literally, we decided to change the system. And in the first 20 minutes, it worked. We had the chances, we had the opportunities. I remember a, a moment with Ericsson doing a pirouette, playing the ball to Bruno, it goes to Rashford, and Hoyland almost got on the end of it. At that moment, I thought we were in for it, we were on it, we were going to win Brighton. But we didn't stick to that. And the moment Brighton figured it out, because they expected us to play a certain way, and we didn't. And when they figured it out, we simply didn't want to chase them. There's clips of Rashford and the likes of McTominay not even choosing to tackle, not showing a desire to get in there, to get stuck in. They literally letting the players run by, pass the ball around them. It looked like a Brighton training session. And that is disgusting. And ultimately, it is the Glazers who have run this club into the ground. Where they think that the club is worth 10 billion, I don't know. That makes no sense. The way they have run this club has put us in this position. Ten Hag went into the transfer window before the season started, expecting certain players to walk through the door, certain players to leave. He wanted Harry Kane, that's a fact. He thought he was getting Kim Min Jae. He ended up not getting the striker he wanted, and Hoyland was a striker he wanted, but not that first choice striker he wanted. He didn't get the centre-back that he wanted. He was given Johnny Evans, a 35-year-old Johnny Evans, who 15 years ago was not good enough for United, but yet here he is at Manchester United in 2023. How do we find ourselves in this position? Why are we being run so crap? It's the Glazers. It's Richard Arnold, John Murta, the board. It's those at the top who have run this club into the ground and now it is filtering onto the pitch. There are lazy players in the team. There are players with a lack of motivation and determination to do well, to win trophies. And these players need to leave before we get anywhere. I'm not even talking about Rashford who doesn't want to pass to Hoyland where we should have probably gotten a few goals from him bombing down the left hand side beating his man throwing players and not passing it into the box or finding a teammate that is in a better position he is not Ronaldo and he needs to get that into his head very very quickly I just want to say that in terms of the injuries it was reported the club has made a statement once again another statement one Bissaka is injured for Two months, at least. 
Apparently he suffered a hamstring injury in the final few moments of the game against Brighton. And that's another injury that we probably did not need. He has been our best right back. The low showed quality against Arsenal and against Brighton. We seem to just be riddled with injuries. Whether it's the amount of games he played last season, the active preseason, and now it's catching up to us. Call it bad luck, whatever you want to call it. We have too many injuries, and it's literally 60 to 70 percent of 10 hugs. First 11 that you would want to start that's not available. And that in itself leaves us with a problem, leaves us weaker. And that's why we are seeing the results we are seeing. It's part of the reason. We have to acknowledge that. Regardless of the mistakes that Ten Hag has made as a coach. On the positive side and on a positive note to end, it has been reported that Mason Mount and Varane are potentially back by next week, Saturday, for Burnley. That is a positive but it's going to take more than just players coming back from injury for us to have a successful season. It's going to be a long season. And if it continues like this, it's going to be a very dark season. Bayern Munich next. And we'll speak more about them in the preview. Subscribe to the channel. Drop a like. Hit the notification bell so that you know exactly when I do upload videos. Thank you guys for joining me in today's video. I am frustrated and annoyed by everything that's happening. And even the football on the pitch doesn't help us escape from all of the crap that is surrounding the club. But we look forward to Bayern. We love the big games. We are Man United and all that. So, till we speak together, till we see each other again soon. I'm even falling over my own words. I can't understand how our club is in this position. I can't. See you guys soon. Thanks for watching. If you want more content on Manchester United, like, share and subscribe.